Marjorie Taylor Greene regrets to inform you that she wants a national divorce. This is a new term that's kind of been floated around. It is not a civil war, it's just a national divorce. It's kind of like when your parents say that they're still together, they're just gonna live in separate houses. Anyways, this I'll give you the background on it. We'll try to decode exactly what she means. But first, here is what she is responding to. A guy named Pedro Gonzalez responding to someone else. We'll start at the beginning. Hari Raghavan, as you'll see in this tweet, is someone who's moving from California to Florida and tweeted, this is such a cliche, we're moving to Miami. I know there's plenty to be apprehensive about worse politics from our perspective and its own superficiality, weather issues, critters, guns, but lots of love and food, warmth, service, industry, vibrancy, a compliment. But just talking about the politics being different. And Pedro Gonzalez writes back, this guy's moving to Cali- from California to Florida because he can't stand living in the mess that live politics created. And he still has the audacity to talk down to Florida about their politics. Libs are a cancer. They are the absolute worst people in this country. And then he clarifies saying, I support actively discriminating against transplants like this through legislation. They shouldn't be able to vote for a period. Um, I think they shouldn't be able to vote period. And they should have to pay a tax for their sins. So Marjorie Taylor Greene naturally weighs in saying all possible in a national divorce scenario. After Democrat voters and big donors ruin a state like California, you would think it wise to stop them from doing it to another state like Florida. Brainwashed people that move from California to New York really need a cooling off period. So she's saying national divorce. What does it mean? We'll decode it in the first ever TYT News Decoder Ring. If it makes our own country poorer and dirtier, it's critical race theory in his school district. Towards an entitlement mentality, coded language. There you go. Jenk, what does she mean by national divorce? Uh, she means secession and civil war. There, I solved it. <laughs> that was the easiest to go to ring ever. So look, there's two different things here. On the uh, people who are moving to Florida uh, and other so-called red states, Florida is still purple. Um, it appears actually the great majority of those people are actually conservative, not progressive. Because people like Rogan and Shapiro, I know those are the more flashy instances of it. But people who are worried about higher taxes are generally conservatives who are like, oh, I can't stand California, the liberal politicians have ruined it. So you're actually depriving yourself of your own voters on average, congratulations. But conservatives hurting themselves, not a big news story. Uh, conservatives wanting to uh, banish and not allow people to vote. Well, that's conservative 101. <laughs> the Republicans have been trying to stop people from voting ever since uh, Paul Weyrich uh, de- declared in 1980 that he doesn't want more people voting. He only wants rich Republicans voting. Um, okay, now the bigger story is there. She's just using that as a springboard for. Okay, let's let's break up the country. I mean, that's what a divorce means. That's what it means. Okay, honestly, what else does it mean? Does it mean that we're going to go to couples counseling? Okay, well, I'd be interested in that. Like, I could do that. Okay, <laughs> but it, a divorce means no, we should separate the country. Separating the country is secession. And the way secession goes is it starts a civil war. And so, by the way, let's now note, as we usually do on this show, that no other show does, almost no other show. Um, the red states are poor. Now, I don't begrudge them that. I love them. I want to take care of them. We're progressives. We we believe in a social safety net. Uh, but they uh, take from the government at a much greater rate than blue states do. Nine out of the ten biggest takers are all red states. Okay, because Republicans run them, so they obviously are totally incompetent, and they drive them right into the ground. They give everything to the rich and make most of the people in the states poor in the states that they control. So it's not surprising that the red states are the worst off economically. They could have done Silicon Valley in Mississippi. I know it sounds impossible now, right? That's ridiculous. Why would any amazing industry locate in Mississippi? Well, if you provided the right context and you believed in education and science and all those things that create amazing industries, it could have been Mississippi. But instead, they said, no, we're gonna give every advantage to like three rich guys in Mississippi and we're gonna crush the rest of the population. The main, there's a lot of reasons why I think a civil war and secession slash divorce are a really bad idea. But probably number two is I don't want to leave all those poor people in the red states. And I don't mean economically. I mean, 
my heart goes out to them. I don't want to leave them behind to the monsters who would ruin their lives in this new country of, I don't know what it would be, Hellville. Um, uh, only the rich win will, right? Middle Earth, because it's the center of the country. <laughs> Middle Earth, that, that sounds better. Um, and of course, the number one reason is because we would then start killing each other, and that's kind of a bad idea. It, the whole thing's a fantasy. Everything about her ideology, if you want to call it that, is just utter fantasy. Does she actually want a divorce? I'm guessing not. Also, both senators from your state are Democrats. Um, the major economic driver in your state is a super blue city. They don't actually want it. There, it would be a logistical nightmare. I guess they would have the, the center ground. The biggest agriculture producer in the United States is California. Um, there's I, money geek for what it's worth. I tried to find you yeah, nine out of 10, eight out of 10, seven out of 10, depending on what how you calculate dependency, red states, the least dependent states, seven out of the 10 least dependent states are, um, are blue states. I think the only way we could solve this if it were an actual like divorce would be some kind of child support payment afterward to kind of keep that that level of living to kind of you know funnel some cash when they're done. But like those in that unfortunate analogy, then Marjorie Taylor Greene would be our baby mama. Yeah, and she would also. Yeah, and she, and that's it. You know, eighteen years, eighteen hundreds. I don't know what they're doing, but um, yeah, it's it's not the first time that she's uh, suggested these things. In October, Greene conducted a Twitter poll about people's interest in a national divorce between Republican and Democratic leaning states. In her poll, she found. Um, in her poll, 48% of respondents wanted the country to stay together, and 43% wanted the states separated by their political leanings. 9% were still undecided. But they were real polls, by the way. And yes, about 40% of Republicans say, let's have another civil war. They say secession. But we're, the union doesn't let you secede. I don't know if you missed the first movie, it's pretty bloody. Um, so. By the way, this also goes for liberal fantasies of the West Coast becoming its own country. Yes, it would be spectacularly rich, wonderfully progressive, and maybe we could even get rid of corruption, which still haunts the Democratic Party in the West Coast. But no, we are not going to do that. We're not gonna leave people behind, no matter how frustrated we are with the right wing, no matter how nuts they are, we're not gonna I'm gonna give a super unfortunate analogy here, which I probably shouldn't. But um, I was in Vegas once and some schmuck sits down, he's got two tens, okay? And he asked the dealer, should I split him in blackjack? No, you got a 20, you're about to win, right? And she says, "Hun, if you had a 10 inch, would you split it in half? <laughs> okay, so don't split it in half. It's a really, really bad idea, no matter how you slice it. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.